Hello everyone, I'm Hextry, and this is episode 3 of my Space Engineers Quick Tip series. Today I'm going to be talking about conveyors. Not just how they work, but some tips for placing them in your ships as well. So today's episode is going to be a little long, since there's quite a lot to go over. So first of all, if you didn't know, conveyors are what allow items and gas to be transferred around various blocks in your ship. This is mostly done automatically, but it can to some degree be done manually. All blocks with an inventory, and many others, have these yellow squares on them, which are conveyor ports. These conveyor ports can be hooked up to other ports, or conveyor tubes, to create a conveyor network. So for example, these two cargo containers here are forming a network between themselves, and so items can be passed between them. Pretty simple. Note that even if conveyor blocks are full or cannot hold items of a certain type, all items and gases can still pass through them. There's one exception to this rule, but we'll get to that in a minute. First of all, let's go over the different conveyor blocks that can be used to create a conveyor network. So here we have all the large grid blocks, conveyor tubes, curved conveyor tubes, conveyors, conveyor sorters, and connectors. All of these can be used to create conveyor networks between various inventories around your ship or station. However, note that these sorters can only transfer items along the arrow. And these connectors can only transfer items if they're locked to another connector like this. And here we have the small ship variations. Note that they have two different sizes of tubes. We have these large tubes here, and these small tubes right here. There's also one additional type of large tube that the large grids do not have, and that's this conveyor frame, which functions just like any other tube. So certain items, like steel plates and missiles, for example, cannot fit through these small conveyors, and can only be transferred through the large ones over here. So for example, we have two cargo containers linked together with these small tubes. And while I can put this plate in through the large conveyor port, it cannot transfer to the other cargo container through the small tubes. On the other hand, here we have these two cargo containers linked with a large tube, and I can transfer this plate through just fine. Also notice that the large conveyor block for small ships has two types of conveyor ports. On four sides, there are these large conveyor ports, and then on two opposite sides, we have these sets of three small conveyor ports. Ordinarily, small tubes will not work if they're hooked up to large ports and vice versa. However, there seems to be some kind of bug going on that does make this setup work right here, even though it really shouldn't. As you can see, this item is being transferred around, even though this whole conveyor setup should not work whatsoever. But I would not count on this working in the future, so I would not build your ships to work like this. Instead, make sure that the large tubes are hooked up to large faces and small tubes up to the small ports. Also, keep in mind that conveyors require power to function. If you accidentally run out of power on a ship, you'll have to manually access the reactors to give it more uranium or slap on a temporary reactor to power the conveyors until you've properly refueled the ship. If conveyors are not powered or hooked up correctly, these yellow lights will instead be red, like so. And of course this also applies if there's no active connection like that. Finally, before moving on to some building tips, let's take a quick look at how these conveyor sorters work. So as I mentioned before, they can only transfer items in one direction along this arrow. So if we go in here, we can toss an item in, and transfer it to the sorter or to the other cargo container, but we cannot transfer it back. This also means we can't retrieve it until we go to the other container and pull the item out. Conveyor sorters also have a number of terminal options. Namely, they have the ability to blacklist and whitelist items. So for example, if we set this to blacklist and set hand tools as its only filter, we are now unable to transfer hand tools through the conveyor or conveyor sorter, rather. On the other hand, if we whitelist these items, only hand tools can be transferred through.
conveyor sorters also have a drain all option. If this is active, all items on the whitelist will be pulled through, or all items except those on the blacklist will be pulled through. So for example, with a blacklist active, this welder will not be pulled through, but this still plate will be. This makes it very easy to transfer and sort items into different cargo containers. All right, so let's go over some tips for setting up conveyors within your ship. First of all, you've probably noticed that there's some information being displayed in the lower middle of my screen. This is the block info mod, and it gives you some basic information about the block you're trying to place, such as the weight and the integrity. Personally, I like to have this information available to me when I'm building ships in creative. It helps me better understand what exactly I'm adding to the vessel, in terms of weight and strength and so on. Ordinarily, conveyor blocks weigh more and are more durable than conveyor tubes. However, by looking at this mod, we can see that this is currently not the case with the large ship variations. However, it is correct with the small ship conveyor tubes. As you can see, this small ship conveyor tube weighs 35 kilos, and the conveyor block weighs 68. Apparently, this is due to a small oversight that the developers made when they adjusted the resource requirements for the conveyor tubes. This is definitely not normally going to be the case, so we're going to proceed as though the tubes do weigh less than the conveyor blocks. So for this reason, when you're building a ship, you want to try and use conveyor tubes as much as possible. So for example, let's set up some cargo containers here and conveyor them all together. So a basic conveyor network for these containers could look something like this. This is very efficient because it has no unnecessary conveyors and it uses this conveyor block here as a T-junction. You could also set up something like this using all conveyor blocks. And while it would work, it would add some unnecessary weight to your vessel. So again, for this reason, we want to use tubes as much as possible. However, there are a couple of problems with using tubes for everything. So let's say we had a curve in our conveyor network. Could look something like this. So again, this setup is functional and it would transfer items and gases appropriately. However, most players like to build their ships in creative, take a blueprint, and then use a welding wall to build the ship layer by layer in survival. And this presents a slight problem when you use conveyors this way. So let's say we were welding this ship in this direction, starting over there and going down that way. So what would happen is you would start welding along this layer and then you'd get to this layer and the welders would weld this block first. This is because welders can only weld things that are connected to another block, and conveyors can only connect on either end. Or sorry, conveyor tubes can only connect on either end. So this block would get welded, and then the welders would begin to proceed welding down this line. However, if you accidentally moved onto the next layer before this bend was finished, all of these conveyors would not weld as you proceeded forward, as they would have nothing to connect to. So instead of using these curved conveyor tubes, I would recommend using conveyors instead. This way, when a welding wall gets to a layer like this, it would weld both of these conveyors first and weld towards the middle. This way it has two mounting points, and it can weld much faster and more efficiently, and you're less likely to get broken conveyor tubes and networks. It's also worth noting that conveyor tubes, when detached from any nearby structures, become free-floating objects. So if this conveyor network got broken like so, this tube would begin to bounce around inside of a moving ship, wreaking all kinds of havoc and doing damage and all sorts of other bad things. So I also recommend that you do not build extremely long stretches of tubing, and instead, every so often you put in a conveyor block so that if somehow the conveyor network does get damaged, you're less likely to have floating components inside of your ship. Alright, I think that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching.